Hi, it's Jordan Teen one and in this tutorial I'm going to show you a new method of doing a decrease when you're doing a Lumigurumi project. So it's a little bit different than the way you may be used to doing it. And when I was creating my ice cream cone, since I was starting from a larger area and I had to decrease all the way down to a point, my stitches were not looking smooth and when I was doing the decreases you could really see where they were especially as the decreases got more frequent towards the bottom so I had come up with this other method and I think it works much better I think it's easier to do and I think the look of it is definitely more seamless so I'll be demonstrating it on this ball so I will sh actually show you the white row that's the first row of decreases so I'm not actually going to show myself making this whole ball because it's really not a new concept to make a ball. But I will include the pattern just in case anybody else wants to make it. It's really a nice little size ball. It fits right in the palm of your hand if you want to play catch with it. I just have it stuffed, but I thought another good option would be to use some kind of beans. If you put them in a Ziploc bag or sealed them, you could fill it and it would be give it a little bit more weight and it could be the perfect size for like a little hacky sack. Now I've built my little ball most of the way and I'm on to the row where I'm going to start to do decreases. So I'm going to just get this back on my hook and the pattern that I'm doing is two singles followed by a decrease. So I'm going to go into the first stitch. I am going to do a slip stitch since I'm changing colors. So that was my first single. I'm going to do a second single and then stitches three and four are going to go together. So the first way that I had taught in my original Lumigurumi tutorials to do a decrease was to go under the complete stitch under both loops, pull back, and go under the next two. And it was definitely very tight and it pulled the bands. So in my next stages of learning I did just the outer loops. So you would start in the first outer loop, pull back towards yourself, go into the second outer loop. And that definitely helped with the pulling and it made the stitches look a little bit more seamless but you can still tell just a little bit um, sometimes there would be like a little nub or it would stick out where they went together or it would pull the bands and you would have a little bit of a gap so the way that I'm going to teach it now is I think the most seamless and the easiest way to date here so what I'm going to do is actually skip the first stitch. Just at first I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to go into the second stitch. I am just going to work in the outer loops. So I'm going to go under that. I'm going to pull back into the middle and then that's going to open up my view of the first stitch and I'm just going to push straight through that first stitch. So if you look at the top view you can kind of see how the two stitches, the two bands make an X. And then I'll take my white band, pull through, back on, I have the three loops, and one slides through the other two. And then if you look to the side, it makes a pretty nice seamless transition. So I'll do my next two singles. And then I will show you how to do that decrease again. So you're skipping the first one, you're going to the second one, just getting in that outer loop. You're going to just pull slightly to the inside and then push straight through that outer loop from the first band. And the nice thing about this way is that your band should slide pretty much straight through. When you do it the other way, the bands are kind of wrapped over and you sort of have to twist your hook back and forth. So again, I'll do my two singles. The next decrease, ignore the first one, 
second outer loop, pull back, grab the first outer loop, slide straight through. So I definitely find this much easier. I think your hook slides through easier and I think it looks the best. Ignore the first, second outer loop, pull back, first outer loop, and through. I think especially when you get to rows where you have to do a lot of decreases in the same row, you're going to notice a big difference. Ignore, outer loop, pull back, outer loop, I have this pattern one more time. Let me just take off my clip here. So again, second outer loop, pull back, first outer loop, and through. So let me reattach my clip. And I would recommend still taking your fingers and going along and just kind of trying to smooth it out. But if you look closely at it, I think you'll notice that it definitely is a pretty darn seamless transition. So here is my completed ball. You can see how the end of it looks here with my three rows of decreasing. So I think it looks pretty smooth and I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. I hope that everyone loves this new method of doing decreases. You can always leave me comments on YouTube and Facebook. You can post pictures of your creations to my Facebook page. And please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel, so that way you can stay up to date when I have new tutorials available. You can also find me on Pinterest and Instagram, so please feel free to post your pictures and comments there too, and you can subscribe to those as well. Thanks for watching!